Hello. Thank you for joining us in this special time of studying God's Word. This presentation of God's Word is brought to you by the Waverly Church of Christ. Our address is 438 West Main Street, Waverly, Tennessee, zip code 37185. Please contact us at 931-296-3213 if you have any questions, would like to receive free Bible study material, or have a need we might be able to help with. It is our prayer that God will bless you in this study. Christians are encouraged and instructed to be faithful, live holy lives, and share in all benefits received from Jesus Christ as a basis for unity. True believers understand their identity is based on being with Jesus Christ. Jesus said, He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 40. Jesus also said in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 5, And whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. Speaking about the judgment, Jesus said that the king will answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did it to one of these brothers of mine, even the least of them, you did it to me. Matthew 25 and verse 40. Being with Christ is an experience of being in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. To be in Christ, one must pass the test. Test yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves. Or do you not recognize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you fail the test? 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Those who are in Christ and those who are with Christ conform to Christ. Believers conform to the death of Jesus Christ. Philippians 3 verses 10 and 11. They conform to his resurrection and life. Colossians 3 verses 1 through 4. Christians walk in the same manner as he walked. 1 John chapter 2 verse 6. Disciples conform for the second coming of Christ. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 28. Followers obey his commandments to remain in him. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 24. Being with Christ, in Christ, and conforming to Christ is made easier because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. Jesus unites believers because he is the same. He does not change in person, character, or deity. This truth is, is a huge benefit because when we accept Jesus as our Savior, Lord, and Master, we know what we are getting. The sameness of Jesus Christ is beneficial to all believers. There is one doctrine and truth about Jesus. The crowds who heard Jesus himself teach were amazed at his teaching for he was teaching them as one having authority. Matthew chapter 7 verses 28 and 29. The crowd's view of him was contrasted against the scribes who taught the people but showed in some way that they lacked authority. Jesus taught them as one having authority because he was sent by God with the authority to teach and preach. Jesus said about himself, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. John 14 verse 6. Since he is the same, the way, the truth, and the life does not change either. Access to the Father does not change. Jesus told his disciples, If you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. John 8, verses 31 and 32. The truth does not change. 
Thus the truth will win. For some, the truth has not come out concerning them, but it will at the judgment at the latest. Matthew chapter 10, verses 26 through 31. God's light will one day reveal all things in our hearts. Luke chapter 8, verses 16 through 18. All that are on the Lord's side, the side of truth, will win. John recorded these words of Jesus. He who rejects me and does not receive my sayings has one who judges him. The word I spoke is what will judge him at the last day. John 12 verse 48. Jesus is the same sacrifice for everyone. In him or in union with Jesus Christ, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, uh, or the forgiveness of trespasses according to the riches of his grace. That's God's grace, which he lavished on us. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. All Christians are redeemed then with precious blood as of a lamb unblemished and spotless. The blood of Christ, says 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. Jesus died then once for all people, Romans 6 verse 10, offering up himself, Hebrews 7 verse 27, obtaining eternal redemption, Hebrews 9 verse 12, and our sanctification, Hebrews 10 verse 10. For Christ also died for sins once for all, the just for the unjust, so that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. 1 Peter 3, verse 18. This message was preached just as Paul wrote, Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, in which also you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 and 2. The message preached was the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, according to verses 3 and 4. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures. Jesus was raised then for all people. Jesus foretold his resurrection, Matthew chapter 16, verse 21. When he was raised, his disciples remembered that he said this, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had spoken, John chapter 2, verse 22. The situation found in Acts chapter 2 presented an opportunity for the apostles of Jesus to speak about the resurrection. They said, this Jesus God raised up again, to which we are all witnesses, verse 22. The testimony of John's gospel, found in verse 31 of chapter 20 in his writing, says these things have been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Believers now wait for God's Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, that is Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath to come at the judgment, says 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 10. Because God is fixed a day in which He will judge the world in righteousness through a man whom He has appointed, having furnished proof to all men by raising Him from the dead. Acts chapter 17 and verse 31. Jesus' sacrificial death and resurrection were parts of a single plan of redemption. For no man can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9. Jesus is the foundation for forgiveness. Thus each person must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, Acts 2 and verse 38. He is the foundation of love. God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5 verses 6 through 8. Christ is the foundation of grace. 
For by grace you have been saved through faith. Ephesians 2 and verse 8. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior, Christ Jesus, who gave himself for us to redeem us from every lawless deed and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good deeds. Titus 2 verses 11 through 14. It is for that purpose that we are his workmanship, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. The Son of God is the foundation for the promise of the Lord's return. It was Jesus who said, Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And how do we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. John 14 verses 1 through 6. Hear what has been written in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 through 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep so that you will not grieve as do the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then those who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. The sameness of Jesus Christ provides one complete message of a wonderful Savior with which all people are to unite. Consider then the suffering of Jesus Christ. How can a person not respect and want to join with someone who has given up so much for them? Listen closely to Philippians chapter 2, verses 5-8. through 8. On the loss Jesus suffered, for us. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant, and being made in the likeness of men, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Jesus set aside the glory of heaven, his status as equal with God, and his own life. Jesus left the status, security, and service of heaven to give his followers a status as God's children, John 1 verse 12. Security in the love of God, Romans 8, verses 38 and 39, and a way to serve God, Hebrews 9, verse 14. Jesus was patient in this. He was forsaken by his friends, Matthew 26, verse 56. He was betrayed and denied, Matthew 26, verses 48 through 75. He was mocked, Luke 23, verse 11. He was despised and rejected by leaders of the people, by the Jews, the people of God, 
even people passing by the place of his death. Matthew 27, verses 35 through 44. Jesus the Christ suffered shame, Hebrews 12, verse 2. But he disregarded the shame from humans, understanding that the word or the message of the cross would be foolishness to those who are perishing. But to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. As Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 18, Jesus Christ suffered loss, distress or agony, and physical pain to bring us together with Him. The Spirit, not the Holy Spirit, but the attitude or frame of mind of Jesus Christ unites. This obedience or His obedience brings all those who obey Him together. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from the things which he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became to all those who obey him the source of eternal salvation, as Hebrews chapter 5 verses 8 and 9 make known. The submission and loyalty of Jesus, not to do his own will, but the will of the Father, is worthy of being imitated, John 6 verses 38 and 39. A work ethic like that of Jesus in John 9 verse 4 brings success to almost any endeavor. We must work the works of him who sent me, Jesus said, as long as it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. The courage of Jesus to speak the truth in love, denouncing false practices, false teachings, wrong motives, and self-prominence, while at the same time gathering people, protecting them, and providing what they need, then allowing them to choose truth, unites honest people. Matthew chapter 23. Having the knowledge of Jesus Christ and the Spirit of Jesus in ourselves is a goal of every Christian. Philippians chapter 3 verses 4 through 21. Sharing in the life of Jesus Christ by faith, along with sharing the benefits and blessings that come through His person and work, unite believers to Christ. A single call for faithfulness, holy living, and righteousness unites disciples. Christians unite because of Jesus Christ being the Savior of those who obey Him. Followers of Christ strive to become more like Him in obedience, submission, loyalty, work, and courage. The New Testament stresses the reality, closeness, and considerable benefits of union with Christ. The union is a covenant relationship, Ephesians 5, verses 31 and 32. A relationship deepened through the incarnation, Hebrews 2, verses 14 through 18. A relationship entered by believers through faith and baptism, Mark 16, verse 16. And a relationship enriched through the Lord's Supper, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 29. Union with Christ affects every aspect of life. This is seen in passages like 1 Corinthians 6 verse 17. But the one who joins himself to the Lord is one spirit with him. In verses 19 and 20, For you have been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. How does a person unite with Jesus Christ? A person who is baptized into Christ Jesus has been baptized into his death, uniting the two in death, Romans chapter 6 and verse 3. When baptism follows New Testament teaching, it is a burial. Thus the person, person is raised to walk in newness of life, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, verse 4. The new life of a Christian is then spent being conformed to the image of God's Son, Romans 12, verse 2. Be united with Christ. Be united in Christ. Be united with followers of Christ. Will you bow with me for a prayer? Almighty God, we come before you and we express to you our deepest appreciation 
for the great love that you had for us in sending your Son to come in the form of man, to live as we live, to walk upon the earth, to be tempted in all points like as we are, yet he was without sin. Therefore he was the perfect, spotless, unblemished lamb that was able to be sacrificed for our sins. We're thankful that you have allowed him to be that sacrifice and to obtain eternal redemption and to make that available to us. We're thankful that your word reveals how we come in contact with the blood that then washes away our sins, granting us access to Christ, wherein we receive all these spiritual blessings and many more, which your word reveals. We're thankful that we have had the opportunity to study these things concerning Christ and the way in which he unites us, uniting us in his sacrifice, uniting us in his suffering, uniting us in his service, uniting us together as one body of believers who strive to do your will and to live for him. We ask, Father, that you continue to help us to become more and more each day like him, like your son, and that by doing so we may live lives that are exemplary before others, lives that will help us to draw closer to you and strengthen that relationship, and, Father, lives that will most uh, please you so that at the end of life's journey or the end of time when judgment ensues, that we may be found faithful and we may receive the promise of eternal life in Christ. We're thankful for all the blessings that you provide. We're thankful for all the means and the avenues and ways in which you provide them. We ask that you continue to provide for us the things you know that we're in need of. We ask also, Father, concerning some specific things, that you will be with those who are sick and nurse them back to reasonable health if it is your will. We ask that you be with those who are uh, suffering due to the loss of loved ones. We ask that you be with all those who are recovering from natural disasters, that you continue to help their needs to be met and help use those uh, who have dedicated their lives to you to be the hands and the feet that perform the service and provide it for those in need. We ask, Father, that in all things your will be done and that you use us as you see fit. We continue to ask that as you use us in, in proclaiming your word and sharing your message through the avenue of technology, that you will give us the opportunity to share it with others and that they will hear your message, believe in your Son, and come to be obedient to your will. We ask, Father, that at this time you just continue to be with us, watching over us, keeping us safe, and seeing us through to the very end, that it, at the end we may be your faithful children. In the name of Christ, we ask and express to you these requests. Amen. Thank you for joining with us in this study. We appreciate your participation. To find other content, you may visit WaverlyChurchOfChrist.org. Search for us on YouTube or Facebook at Waverly Church of Christ. If you have children, search for Waverly Church of Christ Youth and Family Ministry on Facebook or Waverly Church of Christ Youth and Family on YouTube. You may listen on the radio AM 1060, FM 93.5, on Sundays at 10 a.m. and 5.30 p.m., Monday through Friday at 12.30 p.m. You may watch us on television, the local cable channel 3, on Sundays at 1 p.m. Thank you and have a great day.